Hello. Well, today I'm here to just show and talk maybe a bit about uh, my uh, top 20 favorite films of all time. Uh, some of the films that were in my top 10 have now changed. Like, there's some that are, like, one is now gone and into my top 20. And uh, I then reshuffled some of my top 10 so that it would better reflect my current uh, favorite films, uh, at least within 20. Um, that's not very easy to do. So, um, you know, I don't want to talk too much about each of these movies, um, mainly because for most of them I've actually talked about. Some I haven't, and so from there I guess I could say some stuff that maybe I haven't really said much of anything other than perhaps mentioned it in passing. So, to kick it off, uh, my 20th favorite film is Amadeus. Um, I love this film. Uh, never done a f video on it, I don't believe, uh, before, so, you know, uh, I'm mentioning it properly now, within the top 20 list. I love this movie. I think that the film deserved every Academy Award it got, but uh, I do believe Tom Hulse should have won Best Actor with F. Murray Abraham. You know, he should have, they should have tied. It should have been a situation where there should have been a tie. And if there couldn't be a tie, then I think Tom Hulse should have won the Oscar. I just th I legitimately believe he was just that good. In the film, uh, but this is an excellent movie and deserving of it. You know, at least it won Best Actor. You know, this is you know I've talked about the Academy at times and how they get it right sometimes and sometimes they don't. But this is a film where overall they got it right. But you know, love that f this film. May talk about it in depth more one day. Um, that would be great. 19th favorite film is American Graffiti. Talked about this before. Great soundtrack and cast and writing and direction and everything about it is incredible. I always love watching this. I never get tired of it. And uh, my 18th favorite film is THX 1138. And I did a video about this not too long ago. So. This is a film that I truly love. Um, you know, I made a video not long ago for its 50th anniversary this year, so watch that if you would like uh, a few uh, videos back. And uh, yeah, I, I just love this uh, movie. Very fascinating to see where George Lucas began with this film and saw where he went next. American Graffiti was made because Francis Ford Coppola, who executive produced this film, told him that he needs to quit all the sci-fi, artsy-fartsy nonsense and do something different, do like a comedy. So he did that to big success because this film was not a huge success, unfortunately. It does have a huge cult following and uh, it's very devout. So it has that going for it, at least. Um... That's my 18th film, and 17th is Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I've talked about this before, and I um, love this film. Won Best Original Story, but I believe it should have won Best Picture and Director and Actor. Even James Stewart believes his Academy Award win for uh, the Philadelphia Story, which came out the year after Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, so 1940, he did win Best Actor. And he always thought that was in compensation for Mr. Smith, where his performance in this film is superior. And I tend to agree with him. So that's an occasion where the Academy realized they messed up, and now they're trying to rectify that mistake as quick as possible. Sometimes they are a bit late in some regards, and sometimes it's like this. They 
realize their mistake and now they just do it the following year. Um, even though there are some people that year who were more deserving of it, but you know, James Stewart gives an incredible performance. Again, I've talked about this film. Um, I think it's Frank Capra's best film. You know, I know a lot of people say, you know, It's a Wonderful Life is the best he's made. And that's an incredible movie. And he's also made incredible movies prior to, uh, to It's a Wonderful Life, as well as Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Um, you know, but, uh, I love this movie. love how the politics is shown in that it's very honest in how an idealistic guy goes to uh, Washington and how he his expectations of of what he has is not exactly the reality and um, he has to face that as well as with various corruption and uh, in the government so this film is very relevant today I believe um, just as much as it like we was in 1939. Um, it's a great movie. Um, 17. And my 16th favorite film is Eight Mile. Uh, here's my two Blu rays of it. And I'm showing this because, well, I've never properly talked about this before. I did have this in my top 10 uh, last time. But, uh, yeah. I moved it uh, down because, well, upon rewatching uh, one film, I decided to change it up and just change uh, change my list a bit, and uh, so because that you, it's not within the top twenty. Still love this movie. Great uh, soundtrack, acting, writing, and everything. Um, I still love Lose Yourself. Deserve the Academy Award for original song. Um, I still love how Eminem didn't show up because he didn't believe he was going to win, so he was just sleeping through his Academy Award uh, win. So I don't know. I just I just like that. I just like that story. He just didn't believe he was going to win, so he slept in. Uh, favorite film? Yes. Gladiator. Talked about this this year. It is now 21 years old at the time of this video. But, uh, yeah, I love it. You know, the acting and everything. It's incredible. You know, a lot of people have talked about how this is sort of like a modern epic. Um, and the degree of how grand it is and how it's such a huge spectacle. And I do tend to agree with that. You know, it is an incredible movie, the story of the sort of like the revenge tale that goes on here. It's a great film. Um, I always love rewatching this movie. The acting is incredible. I think Joaquin Phoenix deserved an Academy Award, alongside with Russell Crowe's Best Actor win. He should have won Supporting Actor, I believe. Um, I think Ridley Scott should have won Best Director. But those Oscars went to traffic, so which is not a bad film either. You know, that's a very fine film. But you know, uh, Gladiator is a film that I just really love and I just enjoy watching uh, every so often. Fourteenth uh, favorite film is Goodwill Hunting, which I talked about not too long ago, like the end of last year. So, you know, won't talk too much about this, um, but I just love the chemistry between Matt Damon and Robin Williams and Ben Affleck and, you know, everybody in the cast just brings it their all and they're all fantastic. Um, yeah, the, the writing, dialogue is so fantastic and I just love the look of Boston. It's just so real. It's just so very, like, I guess, it, I guess it'd be, like, sort of as a time capsule of sorts, of course, but so, 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 so to so many movies, but, you know, this, this film just really just 
This is just a great feel of Boston that I love watching it and um, feel myself sort of getting sucked into that world. So that's a really effective uh, out, of, out of movies part, in my opinion. Um, so my 13th favorite film is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. I've t mentioned this before. I think I've even talked about it in its own video. Um, but if not, I can definitely make such a video if anybody's interested. This film is actually 10 years old this year, so if I haven't already, this might be appropriate later on. Um, I've seen the Alec Guinness, uh, like, miniseries. Um, and he did a fantastic job as George Smiley, but for me, Gary Oldman is just incredible. Of course, he's my you know, favorite actor, and I believe he should have won Best Actor. Uh, but you know, you know, he got nominated at least, so that's something. Though it's still shocking that that's his first nomination. But I guess he's such a chameleon that you know, uh, anytime he's in a film takes people quite a while to realize, oh, that's Gary Oldman. Um, though that's just also a mark of how great of an actor he is. Takes you quite some time, and, and I guess in some instances, perhaps the entire film for you to realize that that's him. So, you know, great cast. You know, Colin Firth is in it, Tom Hardy, J uh, John Hurt, Mark Strong, better than Cumberbatch. Uh, fantastic cast. Uh, if you enjoy espionage films, I think you might really enjoy this film. Um, and if you do enjoy this, I'm sure you'll enjoy the miniseries with Alec Guinness uh, from the 70s. Um, he was incredible also. Um, and of course it is based off of a book, and so perhaps because of the miniseries you'll be able to see more aspects of that, but you know, for the film... They do, of course, have to condense it within like a two-hour or so length, and for me, that's not the pro not a big problem. I also have the book. It's been a while since I've read it, but you know, um, I think what the film did was adapt it as faithfully as possible. So, you know, uh, uh, that's my opinion, at least. Uh, others can have a different opinion. Number twelve. Uh, the Shawshank Redemption. Uh, I talked about this before, I know. I really love this movie. It's the first R-rated film I got to see. I was five years old. Um, <clears throat> it was like December or so, around the time The Green Mile came out in 1999. So, you know, uh, <clears throat> this was on TV, like on HBO or Cinemax or one of those channels that you know, wouldn't cut anything, and so I heard all the language and saw the violence and stuff, but, though, of course, some aspects of it I didn't understand at that age, until, you know, got older, um, but my mom was also there, so it wasn't like I was in my room or something and just watching this film, uh, maybe later got in trouble, no, I, she was there, and so, you know, uh, you know, I guess, like, the worst thing would be I would repeat some of the stuff uh, uh, that was said in this movie, though. At that age, I knew you know, if I said some of that stuff, I would get in trouble, you know, uh, you know as a kid. So I, I knew better than to say some of the stuff that was said in here. But I still love this film. You know, it's a great movie, you know. It's a film about friendship, you know, above everything else. It's just fantastic, and I uh, love this movie. I uh, love re-watching it. It's my favorite Stephen King uh, film, you know, adaptation of any of his stories, book, or what have you. I love this movie. It's a great film. Uh, I recommend watching it. 
if you haven't seen it. It's just just incredible. You know, this is a film people look back on and like, you know, this should have gotten an Academy Award somewhere. Like Morgan Freeman for his performance over uh, Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump, who was great in that film. Forrest Gump was the year of 94, uh, in terms of the awards uh, being honored in 95, but uh, yeah, this is a film I always love going back to, and uh, just, just, an, just an incredible story and characters. My 11th favorite film, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, and I know for a fact I've talked about this last year. I love this movie. It's a great film. Uh, of course, there is another movie that I do think was better in terms of best picture and director and all, but you know we'll get to that later. But Jack Nicholson's performance was excellent, uh, as is everybody. But you know, of course, Jack Nicholson, you know, is always talked about with this film, and yeah, for good reason. Um, So, you know, <laughs> you know, Louise Fletcher's uh, fantastic. Both of them won Oscars. Brad Dorif didn't win the Academy Award, but I think he should have, uh, especially for the nominees. Um, I think he should have won. Um, nothing against the winner, who I'm now blanking on, but, you know, Sunshine Boys, I believe. Can see his face, but name is eluding me. But uh, I'll probably remember it after this video. But anyway, you know, great performances. Um, see a young Danny DeVito with hair and Christopher Lloyd. Um, yeah, Will Sampson. And just everything about this film is excellent. I really love it. It is fairly sad as the film goes on and towards the end, of course, but everything up to that is just excellent, and, uh, and I love it. So now we're in the top ten, and because of one of the films in my top ten currently was bumped up and eight miles removed and went into the top twenty, um... The next three have been uh, marked down uh, uh, here and there. And then, uh, so the first uh, f film within that uh, list is in top ten. Um, my tenth favorite film is The Silence of the Lambs. I've mentioned this before, and I'm going to talk about this again this year later on for its 30th anniversary. Uh, I just love this movie. I, it's fantastic from beginning to end. Uh, the, the horror aspect of it, like psychological horror. Hannibal Lecter, Anthony Hopkins' performance, staring into the camera, at, like at your soul, and just, you know, Jodie Foster's performance. And everybody in this is incredible. I don't want to get say more about it because I'm planning to make a video about this later on, so stay tuned for that, <laughs> please. Um, I just, uh, yeah, there's quite a bit I want to say about it, but I want to hold off. But it's my tenth favorite film, and my ninth is Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Definitely believe this should have won Best Picture and Director and Screenplay and Actor. Pretty much all the awards it didn't win at the Academy Awards. My favorite uh, Peter Sellers uh, performances um, and uh, my favorite Stanley Kubrick film. This is uh, just hilarious from beginning to end. A real dark comedy, considering the subject matter is a potential nuclear annihilation. Um, 
Yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what can be said. That hasn't been said already. So, Doctor Strangelove uh, is my ninth favorite film. My eighth favorite film is Scarface. I love this movie. Tony Montana, iconic character. Al Pacino gives an incredible performance. Michelle Pfeiffer's great in this. F. Murray Abraham. You know, everybody in this is top-notch. Brian De Palma. Fantastic film. And I just love rewatching it, you know. Rise and fall. It's just within a, the drug world. It's just you know, in a lot of ways, it sorts. It's a cautionary tale, and um, it's one that is uh, often talked about, and you know, rightfully so, in my opinion. And now, the film that made those uh, <clears throat> last three films uh, be lowered: Taxi Driver. I really love this movie, even when it was just within my top 10 lists, or my top 20 list, uh, you know, the, I just love it, but as I kept rewatching it, I realized just how much I loved it, and I'm like, I have to put this in my top 10 list, and when thinking about where uh, it would go and where it would fit, uh, <clears throat> being my seventh favorite film, uh, just seem to make sense, you know. I do actually enjoy this at, at more than Scarface to, in many aspects. It's just, you know, man who's trying to find a purpose after, you know, being in Viet Vietnam. He's clearly got PTSD, and in the 70s, that wasn't really, have a, they really didn't do much to help with that back in those days. I mean, it's better now, but, you know, even still, it could be a bit better even today, but, fortunately, uh, <clears throat> Travis Bickle, he has a lot of bad thoughts in his head, and he needs help with them. Um, <clears throat> I believe this is Robert De Niro's best performance, and I think he should have won the Academy Award. And I think this is Martin Scorsese's best film, which of course is really hard to say. Not in either case, best performance or film. But I really do think this is Scorsese's best work. It's just so incredible. The story is engaging. The character is also very fascinating to watch. Travis Bickle's the un unreliable narrator. Jodie Foster's great, Sybil Shepard, Harvey Keitel, Peter Boyle, Albert Brooks. Everybody's great. Sixth is uh, the Godfather trilogy, which, you know, of course, I love to put franchises essentially together. Um, I've talked about this quite a bit, and I it's just a classic trilogy of films. I love all of them. Death of Michael Corleone version of Part 3 that I have over there. I didn't want to have too many around here just because I kind of wanted to just juggling and dropping stuff. So here's my box set of Godfather 3 or Godfather Trilogy well, with, with Godfather 3. Um, but I love this. You know, I actually rewatched these recently. Still great films. I love. I just love all these movies. You know, Al Pacino should have won an Academy Award here. I mean, it's just. I think tied with Brando for best actor in the first film, for sure. <clears throat> Got demoted to supporting actor instead. It's crazy. But I guess because he wasn't known, and that was why. And my fifth favorite film. Reservoir Dogs, which I've never talked about really before. I actually want to, as well as other Tarantino films, honestly. Um, this film will be 30 years old next year, so I'm planning to talk about that this next year with his other movies. And with the 
some I've actually talked about before already on this channel. Uh, <clears throat> I hope to maybe uh, possibly reevaluate some things that I've mentioned. Uh, might repeat what I've said before, but you know, rewatch them and just sort of give my thoughts for the 30th anniversary of sorts of where Tarantino's uh, his work has begun uh, officially with Reservoir Dogs. I know he made a, another Bill Pryor, my best friend's birthday, but they shot everything that was written and yeah, it's just like 36 minutes, but so that's not even a feature length film. Um, but this is a great movie. I love it, the performances, the dialogue direction it's just fantastic talk more about this one day fourth favorite film Lawrence of Arabia I've talked about this before <coughs> pardon me Peter O'Toole's incredible performance it's just fantastic um, He should have won an Academy Award for this, and I think um, uh, Omar Sharif should have won Supporting Actor also. Um, but it won Best Picture and Director, so that's always great, at least. It was the best film of 62, and it won, so that's great. Here, and... Uh... My top three has not changed. Uh, the Dark Knight Trilogy. Of course, I just did the other Batman films I haven't talked about on this channel before, so here's my mention of this. You know, I still have uh, my thoughts of the past of these films still there. Love all these movies. Always great to watch. I'm always intrigued and invested in Bruce Wayne's story uh, with these films. And, um, yeah. They're all like one big uh, film, uh, to me at least, and to many people. Uh, Nolan's a great director. He has proven himself time and time again of how excellent he is at what he does. Number two, Jaws. Talked about this a bit more last year. I do think this should have won Best Picture and should have been nominated for Director. Uh, but One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest is excellent. But I do think this is better. I think Roy Scheider should have tied for Best Actor with... Jack Nicholson, if ties were still, you know, considered to possibly happen, as with uh, Robert Shaw and Brad Dorif. You know, Robert Shaw, of course, for this film, and Brad Dorif in One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. The acting and the story and the characters and everything is are all excellent, and uh, I love, I just love this film. It's my favorite horror film. Uh, holds up f over 45 years later. It's just excellent. And my favorite movie, Star Wars. You know, first six in particular. Uh, I've talked about all these movies so many times that it's like, what can I say that hasn't been said already? You know, and what I haven't already said. You know, these are. This is my favorite movie love this uh, you know the original in particular that's what I would say is my favorite you know, the best film of all time and I've talked about why I think that so I'm not gonna repeat any of that here but I love Star Wars I love the original Star Wars I love the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy and I always love rewatching these films every year so later today, I shall uh, watch.
watch the original uh, film again. Um, and one day I might talk about my thoughts on the special editions of the original trilogy. Um, I don't believe I've really done that uh, on its own, so yeah. One day I will, so maybe next year. Then yeah, that's uh, that's really it. That's my uh, top twenty uh, favorite uh, films list. Um, uh, it was fun to talk about all these movies uh, briefly, and hopefully for those that I haven't talked about, or perhaps I have talked about a little bit early on when I sort of started this series of videos, I can always go back and talk more about them, like, you know, Silence of the Lambs, or, you know, Eight Mile. <clears throat> Need to do one on uh, Amadeus for sure. And I can talk about Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy again. I'm pretty sure I talked about that, but uh, I have no problem discussing it uh, once again. So, uh, if you've made it to the end of this video, uh, I thank you. Um, I knew it was going to take a while, but I didn't expect it to be this long. So I hope this was good for you and that maybe you I don't know, learn more about my tastes. If anything, you know, I have a variety of uh, favorites, you know, science fiction, uh, drama, epics, uh, horror, thrillers, um, comedies, and, you know, so many, you know, others. Um, I, I like so many movies, you know. Uh, thank you all for watching this. Uh, it was fun to talk about this on my birthday, so hopefully, you know, you're all having a great day, and your weekend has been great. I hope your week will be excellent also, as well as the weekend that shall come after this one. Um, and I will have another video, um, though it will be about a topic that is a bit um, a bit old now, uh, sort of some months late, but I probably could have talked about that beforehand, but then I got wrapped up into the the Batman stuff, so, uh, you know, obvious reasons, I didn't want to just break that, sort of, like, streak, and other people talked about it, and I thought, you know, maybe it wouldn't be bad to do, like, a month later, just give my thoughts on this topic, which will, ca which will happen, you know, of course, this Friday, so, stay tuned for that if you're interested, and in, it has to do with Criterion, so, if you know what happened, some months ago, that probably gives you a good clue. So, uh, yeah. I hope, again, all of you are having a great day and your weekend's been great. Hope uh, the rest of your week will be good. Um, uh, and have a great weekend. Uh, the next uh, weekend. Um, and if your birthday is also May 16th, like mine, um, happy birthday to you. And if your birthday is somewhere close by, hope you'll have a great birthday. Um, anyway, um, just take care, and I'll see you all next time.